What is going on everybody? Weedle Tmeedle here, and we are back again with another Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle, and this one's gonna be against Jeremiah, a person I battle off my Discord server, so if you guys are interested in a Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle Discord chat room and a place to hang out and find Wi-Fi battles, a link to my Discord will be in the description to all who are interested. And now before we get into this Wi-Fi battle, if you guys are enjoying my daily Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battles, please be sure to leave a like on the video as it's the greatest way to show your support towards my YouTube channel and it really helps out my channel's growth. So if you want to see my channel grow, be sure to hit the like button. Now, um, Jeremiah and I are having an unused battle as Jeremiah's team looks very fat. Um, looks like a really annoying stall team. Doesn't look the most well constructed, but still looks annoying nonetheless. As I'm using a pretty powerful team with Mega Beedrill, Crocodile, Scarf, um, Chandelure, um, Restock, um, Primarina, just spikes, offensive, uh, Rosary, and then the Z move with my Cobalion. I actually have two Z moves on this team, because I gave my Rosary the Z Crystal, and then I pulled Cobalion on the team for Stealth Rocks, and I forgot that has the Fighting Crystal, so I actually have two Z moves on this team. The classic Weedles from Weedles. So, I lead up with my Killer B turn one as my opponent is up with the Alamola. I love that Pokemon's name. I just don't like facing it very much, but I do love its name. So, I'm going to Mega Evolve turn one against the Alamola, the Immortal Fish. And I'm going to lay a Toxic Spikes because it's highly unlikely he's going to pivot into Zatu against my Mega Beedrill. So, I figure now is the perfect opportunity to lay a Toxic Spikes turn one. As he just uses to go for a Scald, and I'm hoping he doesn't burn me, but if he burns me, it's not the end of the world. But thankfully, he does not burn me, and I'm able to go for a U turn. And just get on out of here as it does do a pretty big chunk to the Alan Momola. I don't really know what Eevee spread the Alan Momola is running, but I'm glad I chunked it pretty hard. Now I'm able to bring in my Deadly Bloom to pivot into Scald. I don't have Natural Cure, I do have Technician with Hidden Power Fire, which definitely helps out its damage output a lot. So we're able to bring this in against the Alan Momola, and um, now he has a few options. You can bring in the Blissey here, expecting the Grass move or you can go for Protect, or you can bring in Zatu expecting an Entry Hazard or Sleep Powder, but I decided to just go for the Entry Hazard because I figured now or never, um, I may as well just go for the Spike before it brings out the Zatu, and now I'm thinking he might want to bring in Zatu, but it's kind of like a 50-50 if he brings in Zatu or Blissey expecting either Sludge Bomb or Spikes or Heat Storm, so he's going to pull a Hard Switch into Nice Hazard, which is the Zatu, and I went for Sludge Bomb just because I didn't want to set up a Lair of Spikes on my side of the field, so go for Sludge Bomb, as it's actually a really solid 2 KO on the Zatu, so I'm glad I went for that Sludge Bomb, and now He's going to pivot into his waifu status, the Blissey, and the Blissey's going to get poisoned on the switch and things for those toxic spikes, and as long as he's unable to defog away my hazards, um, they're here to stay. So here, I make a really aggressive play, expecting him to switch into Blissey to go for spikes again on a Magic Bounce user, but it was unlikely he was going to stay in there and let his Magic Bounce user die, so I figured he'd pivot into the Magic Bounce user, and then yeah, so I laid the second layer of spikes, which is pretty nice for me, and now... Um, I was so close to collecting third layer spikes, but I'm like, he could bring in the Zatu, or he could just stay in, so I don't really want to do that. So I decided to actually double switch into my Cobalion, because if he stays in, that's fine. I mean, he goes for Thunder Wave, but that's not really a big deal. But he might bring in the Zatu, so I decided to bring in my Cobalion, which is a nice middle ground play, as he does bring in the Zatu, trying to bounce back that layer spikes. Now I go for the Sword Stance, as now my opponent's going to take the opportunity to go for Roost. And now he has to deal with a plus two Cobalion against his team. So, I'm thinking since my opponent has Underwear Quagsire, I'm just actually going to reveal my other move. He's going to bring Quagsire here because he is unaware. He can just face tank anything. And he, actually, all of his Pokemon are in Love Balls, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't even realize that until now. But yeah, I'm actually going to go for my Stealth Rocks. So actually, I'm Sword Stance with Stealth Rocks with the Fighting Z move as it's able to, you know, provide some entry hazards to help it break certain walls and just, I don't know, I feel like it's a good move on Cobalion, even with Sword Stance, because it forces so many switches, so you're able to get it up for free, so this Magic Bounce Pokemon is actually irrelevant, because he has not been able to use it, or utilize it to its fullest potential, because it keeps setting up entry hazards on his switch out of the uh, Zatu, instead of on his switch in, which is a little bit inconvenient for him. But um, now he's going to go for Earthquake, predicting my switch into Roserade, pretty solid play, because um, this Roserade actually threatens his team pretty hard, because half of his team actually dies to Roserade. I have Hidden Power Fire for Scizor, I have Leaf Storm for both Quagsire and Alamola, and Mega Altari does not appreciate Slug Bomb, and he just does not have the best switch into this thing. So now he's going to bring in a Zatu, expecting the spikes yet again, but I have no reason to do that. Going to go for Slug Bomb, expecting the switch into Zatu. Um, worst case scenario, he brought in Blissey and take more damage, but he lives at one hit point. Which is a little unfortunate, but I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Fire, just to show him that I have it so he's not inclined to bring in Scizor, because it's likely that the Scizor is Defog, because he doesn't have any hazard control. I mean, it's the only thing on his team that could potentially earn Defog, and um, Defog Scizor is kind of uncommon, so um, he kind of brings it in here, which makes me believe he might be Defog, but he just brings it in to revenge him with the Bullet Punch, so he's going to go for Bullet Punch, and it's not got my Deadly Bloom. So here, we're going to see what item the Scizor is carrying, as we're going to see the Leftovers, which means that it's probably defensive. I'm not too sure if it carries Defog or not, but either way, I want to make sure that he can't get the Defog off for free. So I'm going to bring in my Crocodile here, because Crocodile, I do have the Intimidate to lower the Sink's attack, and now 
I'm actually gonna go for the bulk up because I know he's not choice banded, so I don't gotta worry about the highest damage output in the world. He is effectively at minus two because of my bulk up, and now my opponent goes for the defog. He actually does have defog on Zizzer, so he's able to remove all my entry hazards, but the things I needed to get poisoned are already poisoned, like Quagsire, who's already poisoned, that's very good. And um, Alamomola would have been nice to get poisoned on, but it's not really a big deal. And Rocks for the Altari would have been nice, but the damage has already been done with certain entry hazards. So now I'm going to go for a second bulk up because I can just set up on the Scizor space because I know he's not offensive unless he's like Sword Stance Defog, which doesn't exist. But yeah, he's going to go for the U-turn just to get on out of here, which does absolutely nothing because of my plus two. And he's going to activate my weakness policy. So he probably didn't see that one coming. Um, bulk up on Crocodile is very uncommon, so... Um, I guess he could have seen it coming, but it was unlikely. But now he's able to bring in a Squagsire, and thanks to Unaware, he's able to ignore all of my stat boost, which is pretty annoying, actually. But he's poisoned, and he's that, you know, not at full health. So I'm going to go for my Power Trip, which, if you guys didn't know, it's like the physical, dark version of Stored Power. It almost knocks out the Quag, and I was able to go for a Scald, and I'm praying he does not burn me. Please don't burn Thug Life. And thankfully, Thug Life is able to avoid the burn from Scald, and we're actually able to break through Quagsire because of power trip. Um, unaware does not ignore power trip's base power change, so we're actually at 180 base power after all the stat changes, because we are at we have 8 stat boosts and then it's 20 extra base power, so it's 80 times um, 8. No, 80 times 6? Something like that. Um, my math is not very good, but <laughs> it's 20 times 8. Yeah, that's that's the math. I had it backwards. Right. So 20 times 8 is 160 and then plus 20 is 20. I don't know why I can't do math right now. It is currently 2 in the morning when I'm narrating this, so my brain is not fully functioning. But he brings in Scizor, trying to revenge kill my uh, Crocodile, but unfortunately he doesn't have attack investment, so the Scizor is pretty much fodder. I face tank the Bullet Punch, and now it's pretty much a Crocodile cleanup because Alamomola is unable to tank the Power Trip. Um, the crit may have mattered, but I'm at plus 4 attack, so it's unlikely. And now he's going to bring in his Cotton Candy, his uh, Mega Altaria, and I'm pretty sure that Power Trip should be able to knock this thing out, um, depending on his EV spread. Um, I don't really want to go for Earthquake because it could stay in regular form predicting me to go for Earthquake and then just kill me. So I didn't really want to risk that. So and I decided just to go for Power Trip. I mean, theoretically, he probably has to make you off to kill me unless he's a special variant. So maybe going for Earthquake was a better play because he's able to live the Power Trip. And I felt like that should have still killed him. I mean, like, unless he's defensive, I have no idea if he's defensive or not. Because I felt like at plus 4 at 180 base power, it should have probably killed him. But whatever, Mega Altar is able to live. But at this point in the game, all he has left is Mega Altari and Blissey, and his other walls are defeated, and I'm pretty sure at this point Cobalion can just come in here, revenge kill his Altari with Iron Head, and all my opponent has left is the Blissey, and unfortunately Blissey is not the greatest check to Cobalion in the world, so now my opponent's gonna bring in the Waifu status, the Blissey, but unfortunately Blissey, your smile won't last for long, because now Shaniqua is gonna freaking punch the air, and uh, Cobalion's gonna get cloaked in the Z aura, the freaking 5th gen legendary trio always runs Z moves. Every time I see one, it just Z move, Z move, Z move, because Justify plus Z move is actually a really nice combination for a decent knockoff. But yeah, we're gonna go for all up pummeling, and we're going to demolish Rainbow Jewel, because Blissey doesn't even stand a chance. Good night, Blissey. And we're actually able to knock him out. And yeah, we're able to win late game thanks to my Crocodile and my Cobalion sweeping combination and the entry has we were able to set up. I definitely played this game high risk, high reward because I risked Scald Burn multiple times, but I got out my entry hazards. It was pretty risky because he had a Zatu and I have no hazard remover, but I got out my Toxic Spikes turn one, which definitely came through in this game. I got up a few layers of Spikes with Roserade by predicting the um, Zatu and just offensively pressuring it out. So we're able to get a few layers of Spikes up. And then my opponent's Defogger was Scizor and I kind of figured that much. So I just kept trying to offensively pressure it and then when I got up those stealth rocks with Cobalion against that Zatu I sword stance first and then I made him switch into Quagsire take the toxic spike so even if he got the defog off the damage was already done and if he had heal bell I guess would have made a difference but at that point I just went for game when he went for the defog and yeah we were able to defeat and punish that stall player so I'm very glad we were able to beat him and I hope you guys did enjoy the stall destruction if you guys did enjoy this Wi-Fi battle and want to support my channel please be sure to leave a like on the video as it's much appreciated and uh, yeah, the question of the day is going to be, what are your thoughts on using stall on Wi-Fi? Let me know in the comments down below if you think it is A-OK -okay to use stall on Wi-Fi and you understand, or do you think it's just a bad idea in general? Now, my opponent's team in this instance wasn't even that solid, honestly. Like, it really wasn't that good of a stall team. Or maybe it was, I'm not too sure. But um, either way, uh, I just don't like facing stall because usually the battles last way too long for me to want to post them to YouTube because they're pretty boring to watch. If it's just talk to stalling and just taking hazard damage and constantly switching out to pivot into attacks, I don't know, which is pretty boring to watch. 
I understand why people do like using stall team because some that's just their play style and some people just want to win games and winning is fun to people but I don't know like I'm fine with like defensive cores but when I have to face a full bowl stall team I'm just like this is gonna be a game this is definitely gonna be a game and even if I win against them it doesn't even feel that good because I'm like wow no one's gonna really want to watch this battle like I'm posting this battle because the battle didn't take all that long but I've faced all things where the battle goes on for like 50 turns and I'm like I'm sorry man even though like I won this battle I'm not posting it because it just took way too long but yeah let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on using stall on Wi-Fi but of course thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video I'll check you guys next time bye Catch him, 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 catch him